we wanted to give you what I think is a really important update on what is going on in Afghanistan. Um, and frankly, it's it's absolutely a disgrace. I want to put this Washington Post hair sheet up on the screen, and I want to read a little bit from this. Um, it says, as, as Afghanistan's harsh winter sets in, many are forced to choose between food and warmth. They talk about uh, this man, Mah Mahmoud Iwaz. He's 28. He's a former tenant farmer, father of four. And he was listening one night to his one-year-old daughter coughing and wondering whether he should put his very last log on the fire that was resting in the corner. The pantry in the family's mud-walled home in West Kabul had only a few onions and potatoes. The stove was dark, too cold for his boys to go out and scavenge. So we reached for the log and started shaving off pieces. This country is in absolute crisis right now of a population of 39 million, nearly 23 million Afghans out of a population of 39 don't have enough to eat already, already. And winter is far from over yet. Many also lack solid shelter and money to heat their homes at night, forcing them to choose between food and fuel, creating additional potential for a full-fledged humanitarian disaster. I would say that this is already a full-fledged humanitarian disaster. And here's the thing, folks, we are extraordinarily complicit because the Biden administration, after pulling out of Afghanistan in a way to politically appear like, oh, they're tough on terror and they're tough on the Taliban, they froze that government's billions of dollars in assets, which are mostly held in U.S. banks, with the idea being, oh, we don't want to give money to, to terrorists, we don't want to give money to the Taliban. And I get that sentiment, but the consequence of that, and it's not all the U.S.'s fault, but we have a huge hand in this, the consequence of that is millions millions of Afghans on the brink of starvation, children dying for lack of food, basic shelter, and heat. This is pure insanity. And the other part of this is that the media, which when Biden ended the war, when they were so distraught mm -hmm. about the Afghan civilians and the women and the girls, et cetera, et cetera, they have barely said a word about any of this that is going on. And it's very clear what's happening here. When it came to ending the war, that was a threat to the profits of all the military industrial complex ghouls who they, they would invite onto their shows to pretend like they cared. Unfreezing the Taliban, the Afghan government's um, own money, that doesn't have any profit margin at stake for Raytheon or Northrop Grumman or any of these people. And so they don't say anything about it. They don't care. And it really exposes the game of why the media pretended to care and that it, it exposes how hollow and shallow their pretend protestations and concerns for these people were. And it also exposes, I mean, the Biden administration freezing this $9.4 billion in Afghan government assets is truly creating a massive humanitarian disaster that could kill even more Afghan civilians than were killed during our 20 years of war. So it is an abhor abhorrent situation. I do want to say they said this morning they're going to give like $380 million in aid, something like that. It's better than nothing, but it is wildly insufficient for what the need is right now. And let me just say one final thing on this. Even if you don't care about Afghan civilians— this is going, you don't think this is going to fuel extremism? You know, if the thing you're worried about is terror, you don't think that this sort of, you know, um, despair and uh, extreme need and want and pain is going to fuel extremism. It's also going to trigger yet another U.S. sparked refugee crisis in Europe. So even if you don't care about the plight of these individuals, you should care a lot about, you know, the safety and security implications for all of us. No, I, I think on the media front, I can't emphasize that enough, which is that, and look, a lot of people were played um, um, in terms of people tried to manipulate your good-hearted emotions yes. to say, oh, this is why we got to stay in Afghanistan. This is why we Biden should have stayed in for another five years because pulling out of a war always goes super smoothly and everybody became an amateur tactician on how they would have defended the city of Kabul because they're 100% great generals. Look, it was all scam. 
It was all in order to cover up for the fact that they wanted to stay forever. A lot of that part was money. And they used a lot of these Afghan civilians as pawns. They didn't actually ever care about the civilian casualties. People will never tell you that the year before we left was actually the deadliest year ever for Afghan civilians who were caught in the crosshairs of the Civil War and of a corrupt government that decided not to fight for their own people and flee. And apparently now we're bankrolling those folks um, over here. I say we should kick them the hell out of the country and they can go and face whatever they want in Afghanistan. This is the biggest problem right now. 23 million people are facing hunger and famine. As you said, refugee crisis, a lot of these Afghans were already flying to Germany, Berlin, um, Romania, Hungary, all that stuff, which triggers domestic political crises yep. in those countries. Pakistan is the same thing. They have a massive refugee problem over there. Then, you know, in terms of just the actual security situation, it deteriorates. If our long-term interest in Afghanistan, per the Biden administration, was the decline of the Taliban regime and the emergence of an Afghan democratic republic, this is probably the last thing on earth that would help that situation. If anything, it strengthens the Taliban's hand and say, look, they are not letting us help you. Uh, so what are they gonna do? This is just a co perfect view into the fact that there's no cable news segments about this. There's no very emotional guys on Instagram being like, this is, you know, shows the failure, blah, blah, blah. No, it's just like one story. We were even alerted to it because Just Security, an organization here in DC, wrote up that piece where they were like, look, in this, you know, there's a massive security council uh, problem here in terms of lack of funding and more. They don't care. Nobody ever cared about the Afghan civilians. They still won't. $380 million is not gonna do anything, yeah. especially if they allow it only to be administered by the UN World Food Program. Yeah. Which, yeah, show me one thing that they've actually done successfully. Well, you know, and you know who else has been trying to call attention to this is Jeff yeah. Stein. Yeah. And this right. isn't even his right. beat. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. But I think he got pulled in right. to sort of pinch hit on this story, and he's really been trying to sound the alarm bells. Just to put some numbers to it. Um, there was an analysis of the evening news of ABC, NBC, and CBS. Since September, they have devoted six minutes of time to saying anything about this humanitarian crisis. Since September, mm -hmm. six minutes. That's it. So when we say, the me you know, this isn't just us saying the media didn't care and they moved on and their whole, like, oh, the Afghan civilians thing was total bullshit— that is clearly evidenced by the programming choices that they've been making since the end of, you know, since we finally pulled out of that country. So it's truly disgraceful on every level. Um, there were 40 House Democrats who called on Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. They sent a, a letter calling on her to unfreeze Afghanistan's central bank reserves. Again, this is $9 billion plus held mostly in uh, U.S. bank reserves. And— <laughs> I think this is really telling. They say the Biden administration has said that recognition and release of funds won't come until the Taliban form a, quote, inclusive government, guarantee the rights of minorities, women, and girls, including full female education, and sever all ties with terrorist groups, including al-Qaeda, that threaten the homeland. And look, the terrorist part, I totally get. But the inclusive part, I also, you know, extremely sympathetic to. But if you're a woman or girl in Afghanistan, what do you care more about? the percentage of parliament that has <laughs> girls in it, or whether you can eat and your child is going to die, okay? Something tells me that those concerns may be weighing a little bit more heavily on the minds of ordinary Afghans right now than having uh, inclusive, um, you know, it, government with checking all the right boxes on diversity. Remind me, Crystal, do we have that same policy when it comes to the government of Saudi Arabia, oh, a Wahhabist kingdom? I'm going to have to check. Do we have that's that same policy question. with Bahrain and Qatar and Jordan and Egypt and a lot of other of our security mm. partners in the Gulf? Yeah, no, because it's fake, okay? They're mu the Muslim countries, they can run their government and their society however well, how they want. How about do we even have uh, that requirement for the Saudis when it comes to affiliating with terrorist yeah, groups. I, yeah, yeah. Tell me again thing. how many of the 9-11 hijackers came from Saudi Arabia. I know, I know it might sound bitter, but uh, I have a lot of still settling up to do with some friends who have talked a lot, big game on Afghanistan. Not a single American has been killed by the Taliban um, who has tried to leave. I heard a lot about that, about, oh, their lives are in danger. Really? Not one of them has been killed yet. I'm not defending the Taliban. They killed a lot of American soldiers. But that concrete claim, not true. Uh, what about interpreters? Nope, there hasn't been a mass slaughter and roundup of any Amer American allies in Afghanistan. Hasn't happened. 
Taliban's now been in power for several months. Al-Qaeda, not one report, and you know that they would, not one report of a substantive regrouping of Al-Qaeda within Afghanistan, high-level operatives, all of these people. Where is it, folks? I was told all of these things were going to materialize you know very quickly. you know if it had happened, yeah. oh, that yeah. would get headlines. You think the CIA wouldn't be pumping that into the media and leaking it to the New York Times immediately if it wasn't happening? So look. I think the simple truth is most of the people, especially on the right, you got straight up played with some absolute lies about what was happening there. And as usual, as I said from the top, nobody ever cared about the Afghans, yeah. um, all of that. They were used as pawns within these. The only people who benefited were the bosses in the Taliban who got filthy rich and the bosses in Afghanistan who we put in charge no, who also got the filthy rich. The people who benefited, yeah. they live within about 20 to 30 oh, right, miles right. of where the real we sit right now. <laughs> are here. <laughs> and um, they are trillions of dollars right. richer with U.S. taxpayer dollars because of the 20 years that yeah. we sent there, spent there. And meanwhile, 23 million Afghans are starving when it is preventable. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.